Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Story time! Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to my page. Here we go! Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time on today. Today I will be reading to you guys Inspector Gadget in the case of the mixed scientist. All right, guys, let's get into this. Okay. Inspector Gadget liked to open his mail. You never know when there will be a secret message, he told his niece Penny. Today, there was no secret message, but there was an unusual note. It said, congratulations, Inspector Gadget. You have won a free visit to the Acme Health Club. Wowzers, Penny! Inspector Gadget exclaimed, what a perfect chance to get in shape. A secret agent can never be too fit. You know, can Brain and I come too? Penny asked. She and Brain the dog liked to go wherever Inspector Gadget went. Sometimes he needed their help and sometimes there was a case to solve. Of course, Inspector Gadget replied. Let's all go right now. The gadget mobile swerved to a stop outside the Acme, Acme Health Club. Penny and Brain followed Inspector Gadget into the club's empty lobby. Yoo-hoo, Inspector Gadget called. Anybody home? A skinny attendant seemed to appear out of nowhere. Hello, he, asked, he said. We've been expecting you. My name is Squid. Please follow me to the locker room. Hmm, thought Penny, looking around. I wonder where the other members are. As he was changing into his warm-up suit, Inspector Gadget heard the top-secret gadget phone. He looked around carefully before answering. Is that you, Chief? He asked. You're where? Inspector Gadget opened a nearby locker. Inside was his boss, Chief Quimby, with a new assignment. Dr. Claw has captured the absent-minded scientist, Professor Ron. Professor Ron is an expert on robots. Your assignment is to rescue him from mad. This message will self-destruct. You can count on me, Chief, Inspector Gadget declared. With that, he tossed the secret message into the locker with Chief Quimby and kaboom! Everything blew up, y'all. Gadget! Just then, Squid came into the locker room. A stocky friend was with him. Come with us, Mac, said the stocky friend, grabbing Inspector J Gadget by the wrist. This is Harry, said Squid, poking a pointy elbow into his partner's ribs. He'll show you to the steam room. I meant what I said, Harry growled. You're coming with us. He threw a towel over Inspector Gadget's head and tried to pin the powerful Gadget arms behind the Inspector's back. Go, go, Gadget neck! Inspector Gadget said, and his neck shot up toward the ceiling. The towel fell neatly around his shoulders. A towel? How thoughtful! Squid grabbed the rope and, and ran toward the Inspector. What a great idea! exclaimed Inspector Gadget. Jumping rope is good for the circulation. Go, go, Gadget Springs! But the rope tangled in Inspector Gadget Springs, and he, tell, and he fell to the floor with a loud thud. Always, Inspector Gadget. Always. Penny and Brain was waiting outside the locker room. I have a funny feeling about this place, Brain, Penny said. I'm going to look around. You wait here for Uncle Gadget. We're right. right. Which is okay, guys. <laughs> Brain waited and waited. Finally, the door opened, but Inspector Gadget did not come out. Instead, two attendants pushed a hamper full of towels. Where's Gadget? Where's Gadget? Brain wondered. Then one of the towels fell out of the hamper, and he saw a familiar hat. He knew right then and there that they had his friend. Penny was prowling the empty halls of the club. She carefully studied the map of the building in her computer book. The map showed the way to a secret elevator hidden behind a pile of wrestling mats. This elevator must go somewhere special, said Penny. I'll take it and find out. The elevator rose silently to the top floor of the building. When the door slid open, Penny found herself at the end of a long hallway. She heard footsteps coming toward her. 
So she hid behind a tall plant. Three men walked past. One was skinny and Penny recognized him. That's Squid, she thought. Then she saw the mad emblem on his shirt. He's a mad agent. The stocky man's shirt had an emblem too. They're both mad agents, Penny thought. That free visit was a trick to get Uncle Gadget here. But why? Right this way, Professor Ron said Squid to the third man. He was wearing glasses and his shirt did not have an emblem. He doesn't look like a mad agent, Penny thought. I wonder what he's doing here. Maybe he's been captured by Matt. Penny tiptoed after the man. Soon they, be they came to a large laboratory with a big glass wall. Where did I put my glasses? They're on your nose. <laughs> I've had that happen. Purr, purr, purr. Meanwhile, in this dark and dreary castle, Dr. Claw was waiting for Squid and Harry t to carry out his plan. It's working, Dr. Claw hissed, roughly mad cat's fur. That scientist will create an army of robots for, for me. Each robot will be as full of annoying gadgets as, a ga as Gadget himself. Dr. Claw laughed a mean and dirty laugh. Imagine what they will do. He cried, pounded the table with his glove fist. Sneak, steal, swap, swipe. Now, where did I put my glasses? They're on your nose. Oh, that just happened, y'all. <laughs> Dr. Carl turned his video screen to view the laboratory. He snarled his evil commands and Professor Ron helplessly obeyed. I take Gadget apart to see how he works, the professor muttered. Then I build an army of robots just like him. Sometimes stuff like that don't go to plan. Brain, Penny whispered into her two-way watch. Brain, Penny whispered into her two-way watch. Dr. Claw has brainwashed the scientist. He's going to take Uncle Gadget apart. Rousers, wowzers, said Brain. We've got to stop him, Penny said, and she whispered a plan to Brain. Soon, a strange little window watched washer appeared on the other side of the big glass wall this is a secret laboratory squid said that's a window washer doing here what's a window washer doing here i think he's a spy i think he's a dog said harry he and squid went to the window to see he's definitely a dog look at him while their backs were turned penny raced into the room Wake up, Uncle Gadget, she cried. Wowzers, said Inspector Gadget. What a refreshing nap. It must be all this healthy exercise. He looked around the room, then out the window. Where am I, he asked. And what is that strange-looking window washer doing here? Crash! There was a sound of breaking glass. Then a scream, the window washer was falling. Excuse me, fellows! <laughs> I've got to save that window washer, Inspector Gadget declared. Go, go, Gadget skates! He sped to the window. Squid and Harry were in the way, and Inspector Gadget knocked them right over. Go, go, Gadget copter! Inspector Gadget floated into the air. Go, go, Gadget arms! His arms reached down and down to the rescue. He captured that. He didn't even know that was a dog. He said, I'm going to capture the window washer. So he just nice. You should be more careful, Inspector Gadget told the window washer as they flew back up toward the laboratory. Always use the proper safety equipment for your job. High above them, Dr. Claw shook his fist. I'll get you next time, Gadget, he said. His helicopter climbed toward the sun. Penny and Brain used jump ropes to tie up Squid and Harry. Chief Quimby appeared and shook Inspector Gadget's hand. You've done it again, Gadget, he said. Professor Ron is safe. Now, if I could only find my glasses, said Professor Ron. Professor Ron is literally on your face, right there on top of your nose. <laughs> I'll find them for you, said Inspector Gadget. Go, go, Gadget, eyes. 
He searched and searched with his special binoculars. Penny saw the glasses. She tugged at the professor's sleeve. Yes, he said. Penny said, they're on your nose. Oh, so they are, the professor replied happily, and everyone laughed. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of Inspector Gadget and the case of the mixed up scientists. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my page if you haven't done so already. All right, guys, bye.